page 24, where Mr. Jaitley says that uh, there will be no knee-jerk reaction to this recommendation of the SIT, which means that the government is not going to implement, which in clearly means that the government is not going to crack down on participatory notes. I had sent two specific complaints to the SIT way back, quite some time back, about two specific cases where we had documentary evidence of overseas money laundering of 6,500 crores in the case of Mukesh Ambani and 3,750 crores in the case of Anil Ambani. <coughs> Both these complaints containing all the documentary evidence showing the money laundering were sent to the SIT quite some time back. We don't know whether there has been any movement. There has been nothing to indicate that there has been any movement on this issue at all. <coughs> Why is this happening? Why is the government so keen to stonewall any investigation, any unearthing of this black money stashed abroad? The reason becomes obvious from just one example. Recently, Mr. E.A.S. Sarma, former Power Secretary of the Government of India, sent a letter. This is a letter addressed to the Union Home Secretary and the Union Re Revenue Secretary. And in this letter, at page 33, Mr. Sarma points out that the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists which is a body of journalists who were also able to get large amount of data of individuals holding accounts in these tax havens, that this ICIJ website shows that one person named Abhishak Singh, whose address is the residential address of Mr. Raman Singh, the Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, that he holds an account and not only does he hold an account, he is the director of two companies which also hold foreign account. <coughs> now this complaint was sent to the government <coughs> on 15th March 2015. Along with this complaint, if you see this document at page 31, the <coughs> copy of the ICIJ website showing this Abhishak Singh. Now the name shown in this website is Abhishak Singh, but everybody knows that there is a son of Mr. Raman Singh called Abhishek Singh, who is also an MP. And obviously the fact that this refers to Abhishek Singh is clear from the address. The address mentioned is Raman Medical Store, New Bus Stand, Ward Number 20, Vindhyaswani War, Kwardha, Chhattisgarh. This is precisely the address of Mr. Raman Singh as disclosed in his latest affidavit filed in the last election. <coughs> so therefore, despite this information being with the government, or rather because of this kind of information, knowing that a large number of accounts are of their own people or their own cronies like the Ambani, no movement of any kind is taking place on this whole issue of black money, etc. And that is why we have asked these seven tough questions from the government. One more thing. Now, Mr. Falsiani here is one of the most important whistleblowers of the world today, just like Edward Snowden or even Julian Assange. Now, what should have been the duty of the Indian government? He has provided the most important information to the Indian government which has 
enabled or rather forced the government to at least take some action against these HSBC account holders. The minimum that we should have done was we should have announced that we are treating Mr. Falsiani as a international whistleblower and that the Indian government is going to protect him as a whistleblower which means that even if he comes to India or if he in fact the Indian government should have called him, invited him to India to fully cooperate with the Indian government to get to the bottom of these accounts for which he needs to be given whistleblower protection because the Swiss government has an Interpol alert out for him, wants to prosecute him in Switzerland for having leaked this information. Instead of doing that, what this government is doing is to destroy the Whistleblower Act completely. The Whistleblower Act was enacted more than two years ago by the previous government. Till today it has not been notified, though it's a weak act, but at least there is something in it. This government has proposed an amendment, and that amendment is also annexed, which effectively says that no whistleblower can provide any information beyond what you can obtain under the official uh, under the uh, uh, right to information act. And if a whistleblower gives more information than that, then he is liable to be prosecuted under the Official Secrets Act or various other laws, etc. So instead of protecting whistleblowers like Mr. Falsiani, recognizing them and utilizing their expertise, etc., the government wants to destroy this whole whistleblower protection and that is why these seven questions at the end of page 3 of this press note are important. Why is the government of India not implementing the SIT's recommendation for doing away with the anonymity of participatory notes as well as, I should add, as well as for plugging this anonymous investment which comes from companies registered in tax havens? Two, why did the government of India not act according to the advice of Mr. Falsiani to track down intermediaries and the mechanism of money laundering so as to get maximum information and funds out of its investigations. Three, what action has the government of India taken regarding the foreign accounts of Raman Singh's son as revealed in the ICIJ website? This is such a critical thing that somebody of the rank of power secretary of the government of India has provided you this information on a platter showing that the son of the chief minister of a state is holding not one but three accounts, two companies' accounts as well as his own individual accounts in foreign countries and you have done nothing to track this is shocking. Four, what action has the government of India taken on the documented money laundering of more than 10,000 crores of the two Ambani brothers? These two specific complaints with full documentary evidence had been sent to the SIT and to the government. What has they done about that? 